All right, so 2007, question number four, free response, no calculator. All right, and again, your trig will come back to really haunt you or help you on this one from pre calculus. Particle moves along the x axis for position at time t given by x of t equal to e to the negative t sine t for 0 to 2 pi. All right, we should be picturing a decreasing function. All right. E to the negative t looks like this. We all know sine looks like this. It's a composite function. We realize that E to the negative t is always greater than zero, and sine has positive and negative portions. It says find the time t at which the particle is furthest to the left. Now, on the number line, furthest to the left is a minimum. All right? How far to the left? So. So when its position is most negative, where x of t is most negative. So to do that, you have to take the derivative to find v of t. So I'm sure when I page down, first thing that the AP test does is it takes the derivative of x and gives you x prime of t, which you can call v of t too if you want. It's a chain rule, so you have to do this, right? Negative e to the negative t, all right, which is derivative of e to the negative t, because the negative comes down, sine t plus e to the negative t and then zero to sine t is cosine t. And they factored it out. Okay? They factored because this is a no calculator portion. All right? The extreme value theorem at this point tells us not only to check the critical points from the derivative, but also to check the end points. You set this equal to zero. When you factor out e to the negative t, you've got to catch when do cosine and sine equal each other? What triangle? Forty-five. So when cosine t equals sine t, you set this equal to zero, and e to negative t is never zero. Do we agree? So you can just divide by it because it's not zero; it goes away. Cosine and sine become equal. That happens in two quadrants. It happens in the first quadrant with our triangle. All right. Forty-five. One one square root of two, and it happens in the third quadrant. All right. So they find 45 degrees, which is pi over 4, and then the third quadrant. Pi plus pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4. Those are your two critical points. The derivative is worth two points. All right. Setting that derivative equal to zero, and you notice they write it out, right? We should write it out too. Just writing that afterwards gives you a point. What? That's why we write what? Because it proves that you understand that we're looking for a critical point. We find the two, okay? No points for those two points. You notice that. There's no credit for pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4. But here is where it's a big deal. Now we're <laughs> going to build the table. And it's important for us to realize that the absolute minimum is based on these four. Not only the two critical points we talked about, but the extreme value theorem says we've got to consider that those two endpoints might be the minimum. Do we agree? Again, you plug in the values and it's pretty easy. Plug in zero, you get a value because it works smoothly. You get e to the pi over 4, which, yeah, right? Yuck. But you plug this into this value up here, and e to the negative pi over 4 is like, you know, some decimal, sine pi over. And what they're just saying is that's greater than zero. They do pi, 5 pi over 4. And they, they want you to understand it because it's in the third quadrant. It's less than zero. We don't need a value. We just need to determine it's there. And then they do 2 pi. Well, we know because sine repeats on 3 to 60 or 2, 2 pi rad, it's zero again. So what do we know? What is it furthest to the left? By this graph, it's furthest to the left at t equals 5 pi over 4. And it has to be in radians. All right? The justification in this point would be the table. I would actually argue that we need to write out a sentence after this because 5 pi over 4 is a critical point and it's the only value less than 0. All right, we want to write that justification sentence. The difference between 2007 and today is it used to be they gave credit for tables like this. Now you must justify this table in a sentence following your answer. You can't just leave the table as the answer. Justification. You need another sentence to get that point. It used to be this table counted as a point. So that's letter A. 
Okay. Letter B says, find the value of the constant A for which XT satisfies the equation A double prime, A times double prime T plus X prime T plus X of T equals zero from zero to five. So again, first thing you're going to have to do is take the first and second derivative. You had the first derivative. Now we have to take the second. So they had the first derivative in letter A. So the first thing they do is they take X prime prime, which gets to be a disaster. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. And they use the factor one to take, take the derivative. F times G. F times G, right? On the derivative. And we know the derivative of e to the negative t is negative e to the negative t times the g plus then that stays the same. You take the derivative of that. That is worth two points again. Alright? I get the cursor off this. So we ask this out now. The next thing, and the funny thing is, when you distribute this, it works to this pretty little answer. It had to. To do this problem, you knew it had to get simple facts. Otherwise, it's just almost impossible. When you distribute this and do the derivative, you end up with this clean little thing. So now it's easy. You take A times that from here, right? plus the derivative, which we found up above from letter A, plus the original function, which we have there. And guess what happens again? When you distribute this, all right, when you distribute this, they want to set that thing to be zero. And what happens is the sign turns cancel. So you're left with just cosine. And again, if it doesn't happen this way, how could you possibly do it without a calculator? You couldn't. So it had to cancel. It had to be something you can handle. You factor out this, and what do you know about e to the negative t? It's never zero. And again, where is cosine t zero? Well, between zero and two pi, all right, it is only zero at where this is zero. So cosine t hex or 0, 90, and then this. So, but they want the coefficient that makes this zero. So they said, oh, either this is zero or this is zero. So the step they skip showing is they set this equal to zero. Solve by factor. I was going to solve that. What do you get? A, a is one half, and it doesn't matter what cosine is ever, because it's always zero, and that's what it wanted. And you had to factor, and that was worth a point. But let's be clear: even if you don't get to the answer, just find the derivative of two, and that you substitute all that junk in and just write this hunk of junk as a third point. So even if you get into algebra mistakes, guess what? You get three or four. All right. And again, this is 2007, problem number four.